coming to you live from the Interaction Media Studio in Morgantown. Welcome to Positively West Virginia. I'm your host, Jim Matuga. Today, we're going to visit with Johnny Jonathan Napier. He's the owner of Nail City Record in Wheeling, West Virginia. But first, a little bit about our mission here at Positively West Virginia. Every week, we talk with West Virginia business leaders and share their success stories with people just like you in West Virginia and across the country. When we first started this podcast back in 2017, one of the things we set out to do was to encourage and inspire our listeners with positive business stories from right here in the Mountain State. To date, we've produced more than 200 episodes, and Positively West Virginia is now a 501c3 nonprofit organization. You can learn more about our mission of promoting small business and entrepreneurship in West Virginia at PositivelyWV.com. You know, I get to see so many positive things happening in West Virginia business every day that a lot, a lot of people, quite frankly, never get to hear about. So our team at Interaction Media and Positively West Virginia is working to change that with this show so that people realize you don't have to leave West Virginia to find great business opportunities. They're right here in our state. We want to encourage people to stay here, move here, and build great companies and organizations right here in West Virginia. All of our guests are actually people who are getting that done day in and day out as well. And I'm convinced we can all learn from their experiences and most importantly, their stories. Our guest once again today is Jonathan Napier. He's the owner of Nail City Record in Wheeling, West Virginia. Jonathan, thanks for being on the show today, ma'am. Well, Jim, thanks for having me. Absolutely. I'm excited to have you on the podcast today to, to share your story and learn more about your company, Nail City Record. Of course, I said Jonathan is the owner of Nail City Record. Nail City Record is a record store, believe it or not, in downtown Wheeling, West Virginia. They're a place where people of all ages can come and discover the music from across every genre, decade, and media style. John Napier, is he's 29 years old, and he's the owner of Nail City record. He was born and raised in Wheeling, uh, West Virginia. He was graduated from West Liberty University with a degree in business administration. And we're going to learn more about his story and what, what makes him tick here on the show today. We invited Jonathan to be on the show today to talk about Nail City Record, to share their story, and to give our audience some valuable insight into the company that he leads right here in Wheeling, West Virginia. Jonathan, take a minute, fill in some gaps from that very brief intro that I gave and give us a little behind the curtain look into your company. Sure. Uh, thanks again, Jim, for having me here. Uh, it's really great to be here. Awesome. Uh, we really appreciate the opportunity to talk about Mail City Record and what we're doing. So yeah, we're located here in the heart of downtown Wheeling, uh, West Virginia, Northern Panhandle, if you're not familiar. Uh, we're right between Ohio and PA border. Uh, so what we do is we sell all kinds of different physical media, mainly specializing in new and used vinyl records. So we also uh, have an online store. So we have our, our physical location here, really. We have an online store, snailcityrecord.com, and as well as several other sales platforms, such as Etsy. That we sell from. And so far, since uh, opening up in 2017, uh, we've shipped to a lot of places, including 50 states, all 50 states, three U.S. territories, and I believe it's at three different countries now. Wow, that's awesome, man. Well, I, I gotta, I gotta ask you, as we get started into this talk, how did you first get into the record business and, and, and music? And I mean, obviously vinyl is seeing a, a pretty significant resurgence right now, but talk a little bit about how you got started in this business. Oh uh, yeah, so I started collecting records when I was in uh, college and I was learning. But I'd always been interested in music, uh, just, just in, in general music fan. I couldn't get enough of it all through growing up. Um, so yeah, when I was in college, I just started collecting records. Uh, a friend of mine turned me on to the hobby and I just started buying a bunch of collections that I could find around for cheap. And then it just got to be just too many records around. So um, we gathered up one crate of records that I wanted to sell. We created an online store and it's just basically the rest is history. We started our company from that point. Wow. After. That's, that's pretty awesome, man. So you, you talk about uh, vinyl. And I mentioned that there's a resurgence of vinyl right now. I've, I've, I've been seeing that, uh, you know, you go into 
uh, retail stores and they have the little uh, section of vinyl records, vinyl record albums. And as a kid who grew up in the 60s and 70s and, and really flourished in the 80s when I was in high school, you know, records and the, the record album uh, has a pretty significant part of my life, right? Growing up, I love music as well. And, you know, I, I long for the days, you know, where you can just pick up that record and set it on a turntable and drop the needle, right? And and there's something magical that happens that comes alive with that. Is that what you're finding out there too, that people are really dr uh, drawn back to that, that technology, if you will? Yeah, um, the physical part of owning the music, having it in your hand, it's a piece of art. Um, that's kind of what's transitioning over to the market now. So like an art company, especially some of the vintage ones, but more so over on the new stuff. Like you said, uh, I don't know if you have any children or any family members that you're close with. What we're seeing is the record store, physical music. It's a multi-generational experience. Uh, something that's a memory that you can pass on to your, your family. Yeah, so, absolutely. So talk a little bit about your store, the physical store. Obviously, we're going to talk about your online store as well, because I, I feel like that's probably a, a significant part of your, your business. But it, it, now, do you have like bins where people can like flip through different records, yeah. different genres and stuff? Talk a little bit about that. Yeah, it's a traditional style record store. Uh, we have bins of uh, all kinds of different artists. And you walk in, we have multiple different, uh, excuse me, multiple different rooms. So we're on the third floor of what used to be like an office building. And it has, have, it has had several different uses in the past. It's a very old building, um, an Art Deco style, great architecture here. Around the room. So what we did was we kind of reimagined the space and all the rooms were connected uh, with the door. We just removed the door so it becomes one continuous space. Uh, so in our different rooms, you can find it's everything sorted by genre, by artist. And then we have a bunch of used and new stuff that's also separated. And then we have like a, a all different style of media. So we have CDs, cassettes, uh, records, posters, different kind of art prints, a lot of uh, vintage items that are uh, music memorabilia, stuff like that. Super cool. John, you and I have never met each other, but, uh, you know, one thing that I, and, and a lot of people don't know this about my story, but I got into the media business back when I was a kid. I used to take, um, you know, 45 vinyl and I had a little record player and I had a microphone with a little cassette deck, you know, the old little portable thing. And I used to make mixtapes for my friends, you know, and, and I would intersperse them with like pretend interviews with uh, famous sports stars from, from the NFL and the major league baseball and stuff. And I would make up all these cool little stories. And, and that's how I got into my love of music and the media and everything like that. So when you're talking about cassettes and CDs and everything, it, 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 it takes me back to a, a place where uh, my, you know, my early formative days, which is kind of cool. And I think about, you know, I used to love going to the, to the old school record stores. There was a store here in West Virginia when, when I was in college in Morgantown called National Record Mart. I don't know if you remember those, but there was just a giant, you know, 30,000 square foot building with nothing but records and, you know, just flipping through the bins. And sometimes they'd have those used places. And then there was another place in Morgantown called Backstreet Records. And that was like the really cool stuff, like the alternative and uh, all those types of different bands. What what are some of the coolest uh, finds you've had since you've been in business? Like, so, surely something's come across your your counter, and you're like, "Wow, I can't believe I got this." Uh, one of the biggest uh, pieces, most important pieces that we had was a test pressing of Hotel California by the Eagles. Yeah. Uh, so there was only like a handful of them made, maybe like ten or less. Uh, that would have been to label executives or even band members themselves to hear the record before it was pressed uh, for consumption. Wow. It was like one of the biggest records, you know, selling records in one of the classic production. You, you probably won't even believe this, but I was listening to several songs off that album yesterday afternoon, Cooking yeah, Hamburgers. On very the iconic album. A lot of people know the whole album front to back. Yeah, <laughs> so it was a pretty big deal for us. Um, we sold it to a, a high profile collector in Japan. Uh, so it was a big deal for us. Um, no we would have kept it, but you know, our business is how that is. Yeah, well, talk talk a little bit about that. Like, how how do how do you do business? In other words, do you buy records off of people, or you you go to like estate sales, or you, how does the whole thing work? Right, you don't well, we can, secrets or anything. Yeah, 
there are some trade secrets in there, but wherever we can find records uh, to buy and purchase, we do find them. If uh, somebody's looking to buy, or to, excuse me, to sell them, uh, we try to find them in any avenue we can. So, yeah, we, we find them from, especially the usually we find them all over the place. And a lot of them come into our store. Uh, that was one of the advantages of opening up our physical space uh, where and when we did. A lot of people didn't think uh, what we were doing was going to be viable. Uh, they, they had no idea. It was pretty funny uh, just, just to hear some people say, like, we weren't going to make it. But here we are, going on four years later, doing the same thing we've been doing. Wow, that's that's super cool. I always like to give folks a, an opportunity to give your 30 second pitch for Nail City Record, your business. In other words, what is it that you tell people that you do in 30 seconds, John? So, yeah, we're a record store in the heart of downtown Wheeling. And what we do is we specialize in music of physical, uh, physical nature. But we also have a dedicated venue room uh, where you can experience live music in our, uh, and alternative forms of entertainment, uh, like comedy, stand-up comedy, and local movies uh, screening. Just uh, we're kind of a small entertainment destination for the city of Wheeling, as well as an online retailer. Um, physical. Yeah, that's super cool, man. What's what would you say is the thing you're most excited about for Nail City Record right now? There's several things. Uh, you know, the sky's the limit. It seems these days. Um, we hope to continue uh, building our name brand, uh, especially on the uh, side of the business. But we also are looking to maybe expand our physical uh, locations into another physical store coming up soon. Uh, we're also branching into the publishing aspect of our records. We are putting out a couple uh, here back the timeline because of some unfortunate uh, circumstances with supply chain issues. It's the global market kind of seems like this on um, most products, uh, products that are manufactured. Uh, but we are producing records, putting out our first one solo production in uh, February 2022. So we are very excited about that. And also uh, we're gonna be getting back into live music. Uh, we're really excited about the live music aspect of our business. Uh, performance art is just a really uh, important thing to the community, and we want to be a part of that uh, in ours. And so with our position in the music industry, we come across uh, a lot of musicians, their labels, their management. We're looking for new markets, new customers. So we want to utilize our position to bring uh, new entertainment that hasn't been through Wheeling in this area before. Yeah, that's awesome. possibly other uh, parts of the city. So, so, talking about the vinyl product itself, uh, you're selling new uh, vinyl from artists that are putting out uh, albums right now. Uh, you're talking about the you know the used market and even some of the collector type stuff, like you mentioned with the Hotel California uh, test pressing. Talk a little bit about like what kind of artists are putting out vinyl now. I mean, in other words, is it uh, is it all you know jazz artists or is it vocal artists or independent indies what 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 is it just about anybody from your local small band all the way through the majors like everybody just about everybody who's putting out music is either the issue in that catalog uh or through the news yeah it's almost all the artists that's cool. Now, do you also sell the, you know, the, the turntables and that, that kind of stuff too? the technology to kind of reproduce these records? I mean, you can't put a, a, an LP, uh, you know, into a CD player or something. So how, how, how are you turning people in onto that t technology as well? Yes, we, we do stock uh, stereo equipment, uh, new and used turntables, speakers, and receivers. Yeah, that's cool. I think that's, uh, that's, that's pretty neat. I got to ask you, I have a, um, I mean, this thing is ancient. I've had it since I've been carrying it around with me every place I've moved since I've been in college. It's a, um, it's a bootleg two album set. There's no labels on it other than written in uh, like graphite pencil. Uh, and it's uh, by a band called the who you probably don't know who the who is, but they're yeah. Okay. All right. So you're a young kid, you're 29 years old. I, a lot of kids don't know 
you know, who the who is, but this is like a bootleg set and it has an album cover. There's some artwork on it, but the actual album, uh, they have, it has like one, two, three, and four it written in pencil. And, um, it's something like, I mean, how do you, what do you, if you have like a cool album like that, don't know what to do with, how do you, how does one go about getting it appraised or is that what you call it? How does that work? So yeah, we also do uh, appraising. We can find value of just about any record. Uh, being a bootleg, there's some other uh, indicators that we look for. Uh, but the main thing will be, your first clue will be the uh, matrix number of the dead wax. So 99% of, well, we'll say a large percent of records will have either machine stamp or etched numbers that are in the dead wax section. Yeah, like the inner ring, basically. Yeah, the inner ring between the sticker and, and the, the cruise symbols. Uh, so that would be an identification. That's a good starting point. Uh, if you don't have that, and being that it's a bootleg, you go with the, uh, the subject matter, and you just look for identifying markers. I might have to. I might have to shoot you a picture of this thing and see if you can get that um, that unique yeah. collector in Japan. See if he can. Uh, you know, furnish my grand my grandson's uh, college education or something. I don't know. Who knows? Who knows? It's you a cool, it's a cool it. record actually. And I, and 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 the truth truth of the matter is, I hate even admitting this, but I don't have a turntable, so I can't even enjoy it. You know, uh, it's been. I've, I think I've only played it like twice. You know, uh, all four all uh, you know all four sides. It's a two record set. But anyway, enough about that. You know, I, I want to talk. John, a little bit about your, uh, you know, we talked about your geographic reach, but talk about first the geographic reach that you have for your physical store. And then from the, um, you know, where most of your customers are coming from on the, on the e-commerce side. Okay. So yeah, we'll start with the physical store. So like I said, where we are located in Northern uh, Panhandle of West Virginia is a geographical advantage. Um, We have Pittsburgh to the east uh, to the west, we have Columbus. To the north, we have the Cleveland, Akron area. To the south, we have Athens, for example. And we pull customers from all those points in between regularly. Um, as far, you know, in store, they're coming for the just the shop around the store and for our events or live music sometimes uh, prior to uh, the COVID outbreak. But uh, we were doing weekly open mic nights. And, um, Fridays and Saturday nights, we, we have a musical act sometimes too, or Friday and Saturday nights coming through. Uh, so we, we do have kind of a, a good presence in our physical store as far as just like a, a small little tourist spot, something that people come to visit we are about um, all the time, almost every day, every week that we're open, we have uh, some music in Pittsburgh, Columbus, or uh, Cleveland area weekly. Um, so as far as our online store that's goes, really cool, actually, I think that's awesome. Yeah. Um, and, the, and our geographical location also plays advantage to our online retail business. So where we sit on the map, uh, we're within like I think 65, 70% of the population in the United States is within six hours of us. And we mainly ship uh, USPS uh, media mail, which is a service that is provided for media stuff like records, books, art, uh, magazine publications, et cetera. Uh, so it's like a second class media service. So it doesn't always get like from bigger city hubs, it doesn't always get there quickly, uh, but from where we sit uh, in proximity to the UPS networks, or excuse me, USPS networks of, of their shipping and to the population and clusters, uh, we are at an advantage because most of us, our stuff is two to four days shipped to the majority of our customers, which on the East Coast, you're looking at New York City, Baltimore, uh, Pittsburgh area, you have like the, the city population clusters we ship to regularly. And then out West also, we ship a lot to all over California, parts of Texas, Colorado, Arizona. Um, again, it really corresponds to large population clusters. That's where we're, we're seeing our business go to. Uh, just because how it's a lot 
to do with uh, how we do our marketing online. It's how we target uh, our potential customers. We'll talk about that for a minute. How do you how do you attract customers to your to your shop, either the online version or the in you know? The uh, so yeah, um, we've had to kind of adapt our business model to find customers uh, because of our in store location being not where a lot of people are uh, geographically speaking. So we had to go to them. So we had to figure out ways uh, where we could cast the most specific net instead of like a broad uh, advertising budget, like a radio commercial or a billboard uh, or going after like advanced analytics of uh, people who maybe like a certain thing uh, music wise. Certain band, or uh, they're in this area and they like a certain band, and they're between the ages of. So we really try to get a specific uh, demographic uh, going per our ad, our subject matter in our ads. Uh, so that's very high tuned to the potential customers. At least what we we believe they will be who they who will join us. Yeah, that's that's very cool. So, I mean, I imagine, I mean, you've got a bachelor's in, in business administration from West Liberty, but you're you're speaking at a pretty high level of digital targeting, right? I mean, you how how did you learn all this stuff? Is it just just doing it? Just the necessity uh, to keep the lights on. Uh, so you figured it out. Yeah, just figured it out. I'm my my business partner uh, Molly. She's very clever as well. Very smart. Yeah. That's so, how, many, how many employees do you have, John? Uh, so we have three, uh, and we have uh, our dog, who's Ambrose. He's our DEO, our dog executive officer. Yeah. And we have a handful of volunteers uh, come by and really help us out. That's super cool. What would you say has been your best business moment since you started your company back in 2017? Yeah, there's been a lot of really great moments, a lot of memorable stuff, but a really big one that comes to mind is kind of a turning point uh, in our online business. Um, so we set up our, our online store, developed it. Um, it wasn't getting a lot of business, but we built, at first, we built a solid infrastructure for our online. Like we allowed us to be able to take a lot of business before we had and um, so that moment came at one point in time where we started to get a lot of business. And that was, we accidentally leaked uh, uh, the latest album by Bruce Springsteen. Um, so we were solicited by our um, distributors. We work with big box distributors that handle accounts like uh, folks a million, you know what I mean? Like big, they, they're wholesalers that sell to big accounts. And there's this pages and pages of data that we come through. There's thousands of artists putting out stuff all the time. We're looking through new releases and we see that one's coming out uh, in, the, in the ledger for us, uh, Bruce Springsteen, new album. So we put it up, blasted on our social media and it got shared around in some forums online. And a couple internet publications like Brooklyn Vegan and Stereo Gum, which are relatively big uh, music sites. They're like the modern day uh, equivalent of uh, Rolling Stone, if you will, yeah. but the digital version. They were saying, Mail City Record, Record Store in Wailing, West Virginia, announces Bruce Springsteen album. And we're sorry, Bruce, we really didn't mean to do it because um, we got a few phone calls from the label and their representatives. Uh, asking us to take it down because apparently we leaked it. But at that time, that day, we had excess of 750 people on our website through about two to three hours. Wow. By the end of the day, we had like 35,000 people visited. Wow. <laughs> yeah. And just that one day, and it was a complete accident. But ever since then, uh, it kind of put us on the radar because we had a, a good website. I had a good base of use at that time. Already did it for a couple of years. That's so, yeah, right. it was a happy little accident. You got a business bump from the boss. That's yeah, thank cool. you, Mr. Springs. <laughs> That's pretty cool, man. What about uh, from, the, 
<laughs> the flip side of the, uh, no pun intended, the flip side of that is, you know, your worst business moment. Take us to that place. So yeah, uh, it actually, it is the flip side. It happened shortly after that. So once we started being on people's radar, we were riding that wave, kind of trying to figure out the next releases that would be hot and how we can continue uh, putting things in front of people almost fast. What we did, we found a couple more releases. One of them was the Crow movie soundtrack, uh, which was um, the originals were going for very expensive. So a lot of people were trying to get the issue of this. And we kind of broke the news on that. We sold like 65, 70 copies of it. And it was one of our first, second ones that, you know, we're selling usually five, 10 copies maximum. Mm. No problem. But when we're starting, that's like in our in-store and a few people in line. But when we're starting to see like 65, 75 orders off our website of new customers, it's pretty exciting. But then all of a sudden, on this release date, we find out that there's been shortages in allocation, supply chain, mismanagement, et cetera. And we weren't able to fulfill our orders uh, mm. right away. It was a it was a little bit of a panic moment because uh, we were just building our reputation, and we were about to let down at least fifty people like, right mm. off the bat now of becoming this new company uh, that people are kind of excited about and the record online business. But uh, we ended up figuring it out. Uh, made some calls, worked with some label executives, and actually came up with some solutions for the industry that are in place still now today. Wow. So it ended up being a good thing for not just us, but for the, the whole industry. But yeah, it was a little bit scary for us. Uh, we were nervous about people being upset, but it turned out to be all right. It's yeah, it so, so sounds like you were able to, to, to learn a couple of lessons there and and really, uh, you know, like you said, uh, impact the whole industry. I think that's pretty cool. I want to take a second, Jonathan, just to mention the sponsors that we have for Positively West Virginia. They include the State Journal, WVNews.com, and Interaction Media. The support we receive from these West Virginia companies allow us to highlight the incredible things happening in business throughout the great state of West Virginia. Our guest today is Jonathan Napier. He's the owner of Nail City Record in Wheeling, West Virginia. Jonathan, I want to jump right back into it. What's the vision that you have for Nail City Record long term? Yeah, I want to be identified, at, well, not just I, Nail City Record wants to be identified as one of the premier uh, establishments in the state for not just records, physical media, uh, but we, we are really shifting into performance area, uh, live music, live entertainment. Uh, so look down in a few years down the road, uh, we really hope that uh, Nail City Records is, is known not just in West Virginia, but around the states as a place that you can find in West Virginia. Yeah. What's one of the biggest challenges you face in that endeavor? Uh, just uh, making the plan, working the plan. Uh, you, you have the vision, but there's always speed bumps in between. Mm. Uh, just up until recently, we haven't really had the kind of the recognition uh, or the, um, the notoriety that our business has to kind of make these claims, make these statements like, hey, this is what we want to do. Uh, but this is what we've always wanted to do. And I think now we're really coming into that. So we're very excited about that. How cool is that? That's awesome, man. John, I gotta, I gotta ask you, we're, t we're you know, I can't, I can't be uh, on the, on the podcast with a owner of a record store without saying or asking you, you know, what are, what are you listening to these days? What's, what's your, what's on your playlist? I'm really into, I'm getting into like jazz, well, a lot of jazz music, classic traditional stuff on Blue Note yeah. uh, and Verve, acoustic sound series, uh, some of the jazz masters, uh, Kenny Burrell, uh, Rollins, Coltrane, but also contemporary jazz, Nubaya Garcia, big time fan, uh, Krungbin also, they're, they're doing a show in New York and we're gonna have, we're hoping to catch that. Um, also, King Gizzard and the Wizard Wizard, they're actually uh, one of the albums, actually two of the albums that we're putting out. Um, 
one with collaboration with the label in Pittsburgh, and the other one is our own that's coming out in February. They are an Australian band. Uh, there's a whole bunch of other stuff, uh, Kigaku Moyo, uh, they're like a Japanese band, psychedelic uh, Japanese rock, it's pretty cool. Um, just all kind of stuff I'm listening to these days. I can awesome. sit here and name for hour. No, that's great. I love I love hearing it. I just the uh, as you were talking about those j- uh, jazz greats, I-, I think one of my favorite jazz albums of all time is "A Love Supreme" by John Coltrane, and I've never heard that on vinyl. Believe it oh, or yeah. not, we we sell uh, reissues of Giant Steps and "Love Supreme." Pretty regularly in store. Yeah, that's awesome. I, I, I'm going to have to get a turntable and, and pick that up from you, because that uh, okay, it, you. it's one of the uh, it's one of my favorites for all, you know of all time for sure. And I I can just imagine listening to that on vinyl because it you know quite honestly, I mean when you listen to a digital file, you you, you lose something, right? I mean, honestly, I'd love to pick your brain about that. And, you know, I mean, obviously it's cool to see the liner notes and the artwork and be able to open up the cover and everything like that. But I feel like sonically you, we missed something uh, listening to a digital file as opposed yeah. to a, a piece of vinyl. Generally speaking, MP3 and MP4 are like a flatter, flatter, more narrow uh, spectrum versus like a uh, format vinyl or CD there's more information in the sound waves mm-hmm. generally speaking but you can get uh, digital music in lossless uh, quality that is arguably better uh, mm-hmm. than vinyl but the experience the physical act of owning something it's like a collectible piece of art that has its function that you can play and enjoy yeah that's super cool man uh, uh, i really enjoy your uh, perspective on that What's one piece of advice, John, that you would give young business owners? I mean, you're an entrepreneur at 29. You've been you know, in business since 2017. What's one piece of advice you would give to somebody here in West Virginia thinking about starting uh, a business? What's, what would you say to them? Um, yeah. Know, know your market and also don't limit yourself to your physical market. With so much of today's commerce being online, it's really important to have a basic understanding of what you're selling and how to sell it, how to present it in a clear uh, manner. And a good website will do that for you. Yeah, that's, that's good stuff. I always talk about it. I'm a marketing guy. So I always talk about simplify and clarify your message so that people will listen to it and respond to it. You know, so many times we get so deep, but really it's just what's what's in it for the customer, right? I appreciate that uh, that answer for sure. What's one thing that you do every every day, Jonathan, you, that you think uh, contributes to your success? Uh, well, it's put in the hours. That's the one thing. It's a, <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's a grind. You know, sometimes you don't want to be there or it gets old, but you just got to stick to it. Um, yeah, that's probably the main thing. Yeah, absolutely. What's one book or even a podcast that you would recommend for aspiring business people or entrepreneurs? Um, there's a couple. Um, Zig Ziglar selling one-on-one book, ten dollars on Amazon. It's a very short book. Uh, uh, that was one of the ones that was uh, in my college curriculum. Stuck with me a lot. Uh, just know who you're selling to. Um, I th- I believe it was in the same book, or at least from the instructor that recommended the book. Uh, you can get anything in this world if you sell enough things to enough people that you want. You can get anything you want if you sell enough things to enough people. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. It's, it, the uh, yeah, it, that's a great, great, uh, great paraphrasing of the idea. Uh, he 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 also says you can get anything in life that you want if you just help those around you get what they want. So it's about helping people, right? And connecting people. So I think that's, that's perfect, man. Great stuff. We've covered a lot in this interview. Uh, Jonathan, is there anything else you I think our listeners should know about your story or Nail City Record? Oh, yeah, just check us out online. Our website is nailcityrecord.com. Uh, we have a great social media presence, uh, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok. Uh, you can find us on there too, Nail City Record. Yeah, it's awesome. Make sure you follow these guys. They're they're going places, and I, I do believe that uh, that you're onto something here, big uh, with the with the vinyl, Jonathan. The e-commerce uh, platform is is super cool too, and 
I, I want to encourage folks. We're, we're dropping links in the, into the uh, into the Facebook Live section, so folks can go in there and just with a click go visit your record store and, and pick up something that uh, that would be super cool to listen to on vinyl. And uh, Jonathan, I just want to say that I think that what you're doing is really cool. And I think it's uh, it kind of like bringing back a lost media, a lost art form, if you will. And I, I just, I'm enthused that it's a young guy, you know, here, right here in Wheeling, doing it, making a, an impact across the country and, and, and indeed several foreign countries. So I think that's really cool. And I just want to encourage you to keep up the great work. Yeah, man, that's awesome. Folks, that's a wrap on another episode of Positively West Virginia. Positively West Virginia is brought to you by the State Journal, WVNews.com and Interaction Media. As we continue on our journey to help share positive business stories of companies and, and people doing amazing thing all across the mountain state, just like my new friend, Jonathan Napier of Nail City Record. Our hope is that we in some way equipped and inspired you with this business story. If you or someone you know would be a great guest on the show, drop us a line on our website, positivelywv.com. Of course, we appreciate your comments and encouragement and uh, reviews on platforms like uh, Apple iTunes. Of course, uh, we also encourage you to share these stories on your social media channels. And be sure to check out our weekly show, the Positively West Virginia Small Business Mastermind. We do that every Friday from 11 a.m. to noon, where we bring a panel of business experts from around the state together each week to help small business leaders win. And if you want to catch up on our video versions of the Positively West Virginia or our Small Business Mastermind, platform, visit our YouTube channel where we have compiled highlights of each week's episodes. And a link to that uh, channel is in the episodes uh, post on the live stream uh, as well. Positively West Virginia is a 501c3 nonprofit organization. You can learn more about our mission of advancing small business and entrepreneurship in West Virginia at PositivelyWV.com. On behalf of our entire Positively West Virginia and Interaction Media team, including our producer today, Mr. Hampton Hill, until next time, I'm your host, Jim Matuga. Stay positive, West Virginia. <laughs>